Hello YouTube! Welcome back for another video. You see, I'm keeping my promise. I'm not keeping you waiting for another nine months for another one. So here we are. And tonight, I thought we would tackle a subject which, of course, every string player will at some point have battled with, and that is shifting. Now, I've talked about shifting, of course, um, to some extent or another in, in the great many of my videos, especially on individual pieces. But tonight, I thought I'd do something slightly different and actually take you through what I have found both in my own experience as a player, but also and perhaps especially as a teacher to be the three most common causes of why shifts tend to go wrong. Number one has got, you see, I've got no bow in my hands, has got absolutely nothing to do with our hands whatsoever. You might be thinking now, sorry, what? Shifting? Nothing to do with the hands? No, you have heard that correctly, because the bit I'm going to talk about is these. Our ears! Now, whenever I... Um, talk about this to my students, I always um, explain it in the following way. Whenever you're trying to go anywhere nowadays, yeah, from anywhere from point A to point B, chances are you will take out your phone, you will open Google Maps, uh, put in the address, the destination, click a button and within a split second, it will tell you exactly how to get there, right? Of course. How does it work? Satellite navigation, it works through a process of triangulation, right? So it figures out where you are, where you want to go, and what the best and quickest route is to get there. Now, here is a crucial bit, however. You put in the destination. You know where it is you want to go, right? Because without that, the best navigation app or sat nav or whatever in the world will not be able to help you. Okay, how does that relate to shifting? Well, very simple. In order to shift to a node successfully, we first of all need to be absolutely clear in our ear as to what that note has to sound like, right? If we don't know that, we can have the most amazing technique that shift will not be very successful. And it never failed to surprise me actually how many shifts tend to go wrong or tend to be a little bit imprecise precisely because of that. Because simply someone has not, has not actually properly pitched the note they're trying to shift to. So whenever I work with my students and uh, I see that there is an issue somewhere with the shift, the first thing I tend to do is, um, because I need to figure out, is that actually an ear problem or is that a hand problem? So what I do is I have them play the note before the shift and then first of all, I have them sing the destination note. And if the singing is out of tune or is wobbly, or unsure, then I know for certain that the first thing we have to tackle is actually learning to pitch that note, right? So that is a little test I, uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend you to apply. And of course, it doesn't only apply to shifting, but it also applies to intonation in general. Yeah, so uh, if that's something you, you, you find tricky, Really, the work on that has to start, first of all, away from, uh, from, from the instrument. Yeah, so, and there are a myriad of ways in which you can, which you can do that. Uh, there are all sorts of apps and internet resources, you know, for, for ear training. And that really, or if you have a 
piano at home, of course, even, even better. And it really starts with something very, very, very ludic, and that is singing. Yeah. So obviously in many, in many music education systems around the world, actually when you start as a child, uh, you are first of all required to do at least a year or two of uh, what is called solfege. So really the learning to sing um, intervals, uh, rhythms, and you really first of all have to get a, a good grounding in that before you are let anywhere near an instrument. And I actually think there is a certain uh, a certain point to that because certainly uh, you will find uh, you know the managing you know the technical aspects of the of the instrument much 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 easier if you have that grounding yeah so next time you have trouble with a shift first of all check can i actually sing what it is i'm trying to play if the answer to that is no, that's the first step. Learn to sing it and everything thereafter will be a lot easier. Yeah. So obviously in the context of, you know, let's say a melody, there are all sorts of things you can do. You know, you can try to play it on the piano. And by the way, if you don't have one, you can actually, if you just put in and to Google, uh, you know, online keyboard, you can literally find, uh, you know, sort of mini little keyboards that you can, that you can, you know, tap around with on your, on your, on your computer screen. So, and it pretty much fulfills, fulfills the same function. Yeah. So, and once it's really in your ear, you will find that, um, you will already find, uh, everything else a lot easier. So now let's get to the uh, more mechanical problems around shifting. And uh, the second one, and again, a super, super, super common one is the process, the, the, the problem of bad or at least insufficient alignment of the left hand. Yeah. So. When you look at um, when you look at our fingerboard, obviously you know it goes uh, goes in a straight line, and really, in order to move around freely and successfully, we need to make sure that our hand, and especially this row of knuckles here, yeah, these knuckles here, is kept as much in alignment with the fingerboard. And the string as possible yeah and uh and where i really tend to see a lot of shifts go wrong is partly because and often the root cause of poor alignment is actually i've mentioned this a lot in various contexts retracted left shoulder what happens when we do that so i'm going to now for sort of demonstration purposes take a simple shift from B to G, first to fourth position. Right, I will take a few others later on, but let's start with that one. So now let's see what happens if we start on B with a retracted left shoulder. So now take a look where my, my row of knuckles is now pointing. Now, you can see that the knuckles are pointing that way, but my fingerboard is still here. So what happens if I start moving the arm? Inevitably, that gap here gets wider and wider and wider and wider. And of course, by the time I'm in fourth position, my finger is nowhere near where I need it to be, right? So, what do we need to do? We need to check that before we shift the false finger, is it actually above the string? Can I, could I tap the string before I leave first position? If yes, all you need to do is open the arm, let the arm go, and there you are, right? Very simple in principle, but what needs to happen 
in practice uh, for that to really become second nature is check, 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 and check a little bit more. Yeah. The amount of times um, I think we all think our hand is aligned when in fact it isn't is quite astounding. Yeah. So what I how I work myself and what I what I teach my students right from the word go and from the day they learn to shift really is <laughs> prepare, align, check. And this is the crucial bit. Check. Don't just think you've done it. Check that you have done it. <laughs> align. Check. Everything good. Shift. <laughs> And that is really a process you have to repeat hundreds and thousands of times before it becomes second nature, right? And, uh, and of course, that becomes even more important once we are shifting into the, into the higher positions, yeah? Uh, shifts that notoriously tend to go wrong, tend to be the ones from the lower positions into sort of fifth, sixth, seventh position around there. Yeah, so for instance, something like those shifts, you know, D to B to C, that's very often where I really see a lot of wobbling going on and that's where you know often people really kind of get cold feet and of course the only reason you would ever get cold feet about a shift is if it's not properly organized yeah so here again what do we need to do especially for these positions here because there is an additional complication we have to cross what i would what i always call sort of the hump right the shoulder of the instrument and what tends to happen is the elbow is too low. If you just went straight ahead, you would get stuck on the shoulder of the instrument, right? So what tends to happen, you get to about here. And at that point, suddenly we panic and we sort of yank the arm round, right? Now, why does the shift go wrong when we do that? Very simple, because we have got two conflicting trajectories going on. We, we are on one hand trying to move up, but suddenly it's literally like you're trying to drive down a straight road and somebody hits you from the side. Yeah. So, of course, you interrupt that movement by going by making a sideways adjustment. And of course, you're of course. Yeah. So that's why these shifts tend to go wrong. So what do we need to do again? Very simple. Often for these shifts, it helps to work backwards. So let's say we start from the B. Now get really comfortable here. Get Practice that note really until you are fully balanced on it and really feel solid. Right now, check where is your arm level at that point? How high is your elbow? How far is it forward? How far is it out? And by the way, how far all of that needs to be where will massively depend on various factors. Your physique, um, how long, you know, how big your hands are, how long your fingers are, how wide your cello is. So it's very, very individual. You can't really sort of give a an exact, an exact formula, yeah? But Usually the problem is never that it's too high. It's usually the problem is that the arm is too low. So find that. Okay, now remember, let's go back to, I don't know, let's say to E or to D. Let's go to D as we did before. And now remember where that arm is right now. It's a little bit higher than it would be if I were just to play D on its own, right? If I play D on its own, you know, I can have my arm. I can have my arm lower and it'll all be fine, but not if I need to go here. So what do I do? You see, I bring it up, I get ready, and now all I need to do in order to shift is release my elbow. You see? So... There you go. So really, 
if I had to give you any formula, it's that, that whatever adjustments are needed for whichever position you are shifting to, the adjustments have to be made and completed before you start the shift, not while you shift. Yeah, and of course that also applies if we need to need to bring our thumb up, for instance. So any shift like yeah, octave D to D. So again, what do I do? The thumb comes up first. Everything is aligned. I shift, and here we are. Right. So the only way to really become good at that you know to, for it to become second nature is you have to take the process apart and step by step over and over and over again yeah i can tell you when i'm learning a new piece and especially something that's very you know shifting heavy i will spend entire practice sessions on nothing other than really analyzing the shifting and making sure that for every single shift, the process is correct. Now, that brings me to the third really common problem, and that is the actual shifting movement itself. So, that's another uh, thing that often causes uh, pull shifting because the actual, and again, you've heard me say this phrase millions of times, quality of movement, the actual way we open and close our arm is simply not smooth enough, it's not prepared enough, and it's simply usually too fast and far too jagged. It's just too, the movement is too violent. Yeah. So uh, for that, I think we have to go back a step and actually, first of all, talk about what is a shift. When, when all is said and done, if we're stripping it down to bare essentials, what is a shift? And a shift is nothing other than a change in angle between the upper and the lower arm, right? You have two parts and how open or how closed that angle is determines where you're going on the instrument. It's really as simple as that, yeah? So now, in order for us to move really freely and beautifully, you know, around the instrument, that movement here has to be as smooth and really it has to be a, like a really well-oiled, you know, machine. I was actually speaking to one of my students the other day about, you know, when you see sort of hydraulics, yeah? Everything, how something contracts or expands is incredibly soft, incredibly smooth. There is no creaking whatsoever. So, and the first, again, the first challenge I said to my students when they learn to shift and forever thereafter is really to learn not to shift quickly, anyone can shift quickly, to shift slowly. How slowly can you actually move? Now you see the softness here with which my arm opens and you can also hear how when I arrive on the new note, the quality of that movement, the softness of that movement actually translates into the quality of the note. Yeah. Now, if I were to do, you, you can hear immediately if my arm movement is sort of, you see that the arrival note is heavily compromised if the movement is bad. So, and again, this is uh, something you really only, you know, master through 
time and doing it time and time again. And of course, scales are a wonderful, you know, vehicle for that because you've got so many, you've got so many shifts in there, yeah? So if I just show you something very basic. Okay, see, we check our alignment. Slow movement. generally the more worried we are about a shift the harder it is to be absolutely relaxed in the movement so really do you know in particularly find those shifts which worry you and you know really check all three aspects that we have talked about you know okay check the pitch am i absolutely clear where i'm going fine next alignment okay am i absolutely perfectly aligned for where i want to go third check how am i moving is my arm opening or closing nicely or is the movement that does it feel like you are opening you know without any resistance whatsoever or closing without any resistance or is there an element of sort of jitter in there yeah and uh one final little bonus point i would add is um on the whole i think we tend to worry more about shifting upwards but um the shifts that tend to go wrong more often than not are the ones downwards and um and I think the reason behind that is uh, not dissimilar for the, um, to the reason why so many climbing and mountaineering accidents happen not on the way to the summit, but on the way down. And that is very simply because we are, both our mental and our physical energy tends to be heavily preoccupied with going up. And somehow when we're going backwards, we're sort of mentally relaxing far too soon yeah we have put all our mental or physical energy into getting that upward shift right and suddenly we're coming back down and whoops yeah and especially the alignment part yeah especially when you're coming back down sort of into fourth position from you know somewhere like check that actually your fourth finger is in line before you come back yeah so Lots and lots and lots of little things there to um, to uh, to check, and I can't emphasize it enough. The more time you spend really dissecting these things incredibly, incredibly slowly, the less of a problem you will have. And really, there should come a point where shifting doesn't scare you whatsoever. And dare I say it, you will actually love the process. Yeah, so as usual, uh, do uh, type any questions below which uh, may have cropped up. I always absolutely love to hear from you and hear your, your feedback and your questions. And I always try to respond as quickly as I, as I possibly can. And, um, and if you found this video helpful, as usual, smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And, um, and of course, if you, as usual, if you want to go into any of that, um, into much more depth and you want me to have a look at exactly what it is, um, you are doing, feel free to get in touch through my website and we'll see whether we can book you in for a lesson. Thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon.